All right, so now that the hierarchy of power in the DC universe has changed forever, seriously, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, Black Adam is almost a reset button in a sense for the DCEU, and that of which that has been established over the past mm, eight-ish years or so. But we're not dwelling on the past, let's look forward to the bright future of the various DCEU films that are set to release, the ones in development, rumored projects, and the unfortunate ones that are in some sort of purgatory production hell. One day, my friends, one day we'll get that weasel trilogy no one's asking for. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then battering that like button as it helps the channel and prevents Paul from firing me. And also, don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns, recaps, and other videos like this every day. With that out of the way, a huge thank you for clicking this. Now, let's dive into the video. Now, as the team was editing this video, big news dropped causing a shakeup at DC Films as it was just announced that James Gunn and Peter Safran have taken on the roles of co-CEOs of the DC Universe, which I'm guessing is now solely the DCU. Suck it, Kevin Studios. But truly, the hierarchy of power has changed with these two at the helm, and in turn could mean some of the shelved or doubtful projects could be back on the menu. With Gunn seeing success with both the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker series, creative juices will fly, and who knows, maybe this is all an elaborate plan to find Finally cross over the Batman and Scooby-Doo in live action. Anyway, the next DC film ready for release happens to be Shazam! Fury of the Gods hitting cinemas on March 17th, 2023. Following the release of Black Adam seems to be a cheeky way of bringing the Shazamly back into things. However, the sequel doesn't look like these two gods will be facing off just yet. Instead, Fury of the Gods is bringing back the whole group we grew to love in the first film, along with their superhero counterparts, but instead, it's the villains of the Daughters of Atlas that they're going to be going up against. Hespira, Calypso, and Athena, played by Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and Rachel Zegler, respectively, as they are upset by how Billy and the others have used the powers that they were given. They're going to face off with the group, trying to retrieve them in what appears to be a massive Transformers dragon fight. Right? Do you remember that dragon from Transformers the last night? What what the hell was that thing? Now it's no doubt that there's going to be a post credit scene that will set up a Shazam versus Black Adam storyline because of their connection to the gods. So anyone hoping for that Mr. Mind and Mark Strong's Dr. Savannah might pop back up again, mm, maybe in a Shazam 3. Next time, baby. Zooming into theaters on June 23rd, 2023 is the fastest DC hero, The Trash, I mean The Flash, featuring bad boy of the superhero world, Ezra Miller. The Flash movie has had hiccup after hiccup with directors being switched out, scripts being reworked, the title being switched from The Flash to Flashpoint and then back again because of reasons, along with an apology tour by DC regarding their lead. But Andy Muschietti is firmly set directing this story, which has been said to be tackling the Flashpoint comic storyline. In this, Barry Allen crashes through different dimensions, changing his mother's fate, which in turn has a huge ripple effect, resulting in the heroes that we've seen in the Justice League to take on entirely different story arcs. There have been set photos of multiple flashes, uh, fla flashers, flash people being featured along with Michael Keaton's return as Batman from his stint as the character dating all the way back to 1989. It's also rumored we're going to see Michael Shannon and Aja Treya return as their characters from Man of Steel along with Sasha Kali being introduced as Supergirl. This movie has the potential to shake things up and kind of rewrite what we know the DCEU is, potentially even resulting in a recast of Barry Allen, switching out characters we've grown to love, and even dropping in other DC properties that we haven't seen become part of this established DCEU as of now. We'll see if this multiverse of madness lives up to the Flashpoint name. 
Beetleborg fans rejoice. I know it's been a tough 25 years because Blue Beetle is crawling into theaters on August 18th, 2023. Now, I'm not too aware of who Blue Beetle is, but his comic origins date all the way back to 1939. There's been roughly three different characters donning the Blue Beetle mantle, Dan Garrett, Ted Korg, and Jamie Reyes, with this theatrical adaptation following the most recent one, Jamie Reyes. Cobra Kai stars Sholo Mary Duenya, oh my gosh, I totally butchered that, has been cast in the role, which follows a Mexican-American teen living in Texas with his family when a mysterious scarab essentially attaches itself to Reyes and turns out to be an alien battle suit of some sort. This obviously shakes up his life with these newfound powers and responsibility. Behind the scenes photos have given us a great look at the superhero outfit that he'll be wearing, which is like spot on from the comic book panels. I'm definitely intrigued by this newer character. Now, while plot details have been scarce, it's most likely going to serve as an origin story to the character, with Susan Sarandon being cast as Victoria Cord, the wife of the second Blue Beetle, Ted Korg. She's supposed to wind up being a villain of some sort, I'm assuming wanting the Scarab for her own nefarious purposes. Again, this is all speculation, so let me know your thoughts on Blue Beetle and whether or not you grew up with the Beetleborgs. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is set to go face to face with one of the 17 Avatar movies surfing into theaters on Christmas 2023. Hey, my man. Now much like every DCEU film, there's been a delay after delay being attributed to post-production difficulties. Mainly, they don't have a clue what is happening with the film. Do they include Amber Heard, who is said to have her role significantly lessened, and even though Batflick is out as the DC Batman, he was spotted in a behind-the-scenes video confirming that he is part of the film, maybe just a post credit stinger, I mean, who knows. But Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is said to be revolving around Black Manta pursuing his revenge on Aquaman after the events of the first film, teaming up with Randall Park's Dr. Shin from the post credit scene of that movie. Orm the Ocean Man, Ocean Man. <laughs> is also vying for the Ocean Master role once again. Director James Wan stated he wanted to incorporate some real-world themes into this sequel, focusing more on a darker, almost horror aspects. Being largely inspired by the 1960s cult horror film Planet of the Vampires, which follows a crew being drawn to a distress beacon on a strange planet, only to realize that they are being manipulated into showing up there. As the strange creature's planet is dying, they seek an escape to the human's world and are going to populate that. Which I could see being used here, you know, mirroring ecological events happening today. It is a bit odd though because on the other hand, Jason Momoa has been stated saying that they are leaning more into the comedy with the script. So who knows, it, it could be the best of both worlds, question mark? The most interesting one in this DC lineup has got to be Joker 2, hitting theaters October 4th, 2024. The success of the first Joker was unbelievable, and essentially it's a standalone, it's in its own world without the caped crusader. And even DC, I'm sure, was shocked they had no clue this was going to happen. Anyway, director Todd Phillips, along with Joaquin Phoenix, are back in this sequel, titling it Joker Fola Adouche de De Foley Adou. I'm I'm sorry, pardon my French. Uh, he here's a picture of the script. My apologies. But the French expression translates to madness for two, and is defined as being a shared delusional disorder between two people. Which leads into the casting of Lady Gaga as Philip's take on Harley Quinn. And going one further, the sequel is described as being a musical, comparing it to 1977's New York, New York approach, as the first film took many similarities from the 1976 Taxi Driver film. Yep, any sort of superhero mold of the last decade is completely thrown out of the window for this one. The plot is supposed to pick up after the muddled events or delusions of the first Joker, so expect a lot of it to take place in both um, Arkham State Hospital and Arkham Asylum. The musical aspects could solely be from the viewpoint of Harley Quinn as well, but this is still unconfirmed. This isn't supposed to be connected to the greater DCEU or even the Robert Pattinson Batman film, but if money talks, which it does, they could make this into kind of a prequel years, and I mean years before the Batman, you know, set in the same universe. 
Those are the DC films that we have the most information on, so yay! But now let's jump into some of the films that have been said to be in some sort of development, whether it be a full script or just the name with some dollar signs written on a napkin during a Warner Brothers happy hour. A third Wonder Woman is currently in development, said to be fast-tracked after the fans went mild after the lukewarm reception to Wonder Woman 1984. Again, not much is known aside from Patty Jenkins coming back to direct and Gal Gadot starring. Jenkins has kind of been divided time-wise between this and a Star Wars Squadrons film. However, that was delayed indefinitely much like every other Star Wars film, so work on the script is back on track. Maybe, just maybe, a late 2023 if loads of coffee is involved. After the success of The Batman, it's no surprise director Matt Reeves and lead Robert Battinson are coming back for the sequel. Though not much is known regarding a release date or even plot details, we can assume that it'll be kind of the next steps in Batman and Bruce Wayne's evolution, aka him becoming the kind of playboy persona and the caped crusader. As for villains, the Batman set up Barry Keegan's Joker in a deleted scene, along with hinting at both the Court of Owls and the villain of Hush. So it'll be interesting where Reeves takes things and how this also will connect with the upcoming Gotham PD and Penguin series coming to HBO Max. There's also been word that a second Batman series of films would be popping off in the extended world of DC films. It's pretty much all a she said, he said kind of situation, so take this with a lot of salt, not, not just a grain. But with the events of The Flash shaking things up, this could result in Ben Affleck returning to the Batsuit, or even an older Michael Keaton Batman that introduces other members of the Bat family, like Robin or Bat girl, I mean, well, bat girl, uh, we'll get to that later. However, with Walter Hamada recently stepping down as head of the DC films, this could be complete nonsense, honestly, and scrapped at this point. Man of Steel fans, you've been waiting a long, and I mean long time, for that sequel. Well, get ready because a Girl of Steel movie is in the works. I have no problem with female heroes. I'm just saying, make your own. But yeah, presumably this is going to be following Sasha Callie's Supergirl, who will be featured also in the Flash movie. It is unclear whether or not she will be the official Supergirl of the DCEU, or maybe she'll be teaming up with Henry Cavill's Superman in the film. We really don't know. Either way, the writer of the Cloverfield Paradox is said to be tackling the script. Since we're talking about super people, let's talk about the Man of Steel sequel. Literally, nothing was known about this. The whole concept was wrapped up in kryptonite, with Henry Cavill never wearing the suit again. Well, the mid credit scene of Black Adam completely changed that, bringing a shining beacon of hope because Henry Cavill's Superman makes a cameo. This is huge because he hasn't worn the suit since 2017's Justice League and wasn't even featured in the end credits for Shazam or even Peacemaker. So with him seemingly coming back to the DCEU shakes things up, potentially fast-tracking this long overdue Man of Steel sequel with him facing off against probably Black Adam, because uh, if you remember, the hierarchy of power in the DC universe has changed forever. Again, nothing but hope now. Yeah, as I was writing this, Henry Cavill dropped a video of him in the suit, stating it's official that he is back as Superman, teasing that the suit and his cameo in Black Adam are just a taste, just a taste of what's to come, so expect big news on this sequel soon. <laughs> A Green Lantern Corps film has been hinted at and in development all the way back from 2014 when Justice League and everything was kind of on the horizon. However, things have kind of cooled down ever since the Green Lantern series on HBO Max was announced. We may still see this film, which is once said to be featuring old and new Green Lanterns with Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, and described as being lethal weapon in space. I mean, sign me up because giant green fists and someone complaining that they are too old for this sh has got my money. Much like Green Lantern, a cyborg standalone movie was supposed to be released in 2020, but uh, yeah, we're, we're two years past that and that did not happen. 
Actor Ray Fisher, who portrayed the Mr. Robot Man, voiced strong opinions about the current DC film's leadership and the alleged mistreatment during Justice League reshoots towards director Joss Whedon. Cyborg was to appear in the Flash movie as well, but has since been entirely written out of that. Fisher vowed not to work with DC films until something has changed, and with Walter Hamada stepping down, there could be a chance of his return, but very unlikely. A Black Hawk movie has seen some interest by director Steven Spielberg. Yes, THE Steven Spielberg. With it following World War II era fighters who then turn into mercenaries, it sounds like it would have kind of no connection to the current DCEU unless it somehow weaves in with Wonder Woman's origins. But again, that is a huge if because Steven Spielberg hasn't really come back around on this one. Jared Leto's Joker was a interesting adaptation to say the least, and we're supposed to see his Joker return in an untitled Jared Leto Joker project at some point. Maybe not really. Yeah, this is probably not going to happen. It was said to be a standalone Joker movie, which would then lead into a Harley and Joker couples movie. However, with Leto's comments regarding DC and the massive success of 2019's Joker, it seems like Leto may have to keep all of those dead rats and used condoms for himself. A Nightwing film was hinted to be a part of the DCEU master plan all the way back in 2014, with it later bringing on Chris McKay to write the script. As recently as 2021, McKay said it's not lost yet, hinting we could see Nightwing on the big screen at some point. And if the Gotham Knights game is any indication of Nightwing's physique, he is the total package. <laughs> a script for the interstellar mercenary and bounty hunter Lobo is in the works, with screenwriter Jason Fuchs being said to have finished a new draft earlier this year. Aside from the rumored Michael Bay connection and potentially him directing it, it seems like Lobo may have to sit around puffing that cigar just waiting. An electrifying new project featuring Static Shock is also in the works at DC, based on the Milestone comic, an animated TV show that honestly I used to watch all the time on Saturday mornings. The electromagnetic teen is supposed to be hit the big screen at some point. Michael B. Jordan and Reggie Huddle are executive producing this adaptation, which could dive into the greater DC universe, but more likely start as kind of a standalone movie. I just hope we see my man surfing on that manhole cover. We already talked about Superman and the return of Man of Steel in a sequel, but there is also a movement on another Superman standalone film coming from J.J. Abrams' production company, Bad Robot, featuring a black lead as our Superman. It is unknown which Superman will be featured, or even a multiversal version of Clark Kent. A short list of directors has been rumored, but with the other Superman series Michael B. Jordan is working on, along with this updated Man of Steel sequel news, this project, like a few others, is probably going to be retooled after this. An Our Man project is in the works, first being announced in 2021. This one honestly might be my most intriguing of the list, revolving around a man who takes a pill that allows him to increase his strength and endurance for only one hour and can only be taken once a day. Hmm, sounds like Project Power took some liberties with this idea. Anyway, Gavin James and Neil Widener are said to be writing the script, however, there has been no word since 2021. And a Black Canary movie starring Journey Smollett from Birds of Prey is said to be on its way. Though no release date as of now, the most recent development was from June of 2022, with Smollett stating that she was excited to explore the character in a deeper way. This could be a follow-up to 2020's Birds of Prey, or a fresh start in the ever-changing DCEU film universe. Now it's time to pour one out for these next few projects. They aren't dead entirely, but have put into some sort of creation purgatory a hell and shelved. Will we see them? Do we want to see them? Eh, maybe. First up is The Trench, which was supposed to be a offshoot kind of one-off story connection to the first Aquaman, focusing on 
you guessed it, the Trench. These were the fish monster people that devolved from Atlanteans, shown attacking Aquaman and the boat in the first film. Now, James Wan said he wanted this to be a horror film focusing on the species and the different realm in the oceans that we haven't seen yet. Noah Gardner and Aidan Fitzgerald even completed the script. It's ready to go. However, Warner Brothers shelved it saying maybe one day. Now, James Wan later came out in 2021, stating that the film would actually be a Black Manta solo movie starring Yahya abdul Mateen II, rather than focusing entirely on The Trench. Just like The Trench, a new Gods movie was supposed to be helmed by director Ava DuVernay, which would focus on Mr. Miracle, Dark Side, Apocalypse, with DuVernay saying that she even looked into tweets and kind of fan reception for some of the casting, saying, quote, I'm taking notes. However, the same time the trench was shelved, this project was put right alongside it. A Wonder Twins film starring K.J. Appa and Isabel May was said to be in development following a kind of origin story in a sense with the two learning to adapt to Earth along with their powers. The film was supposed to be an HBO Max exclusive but was entirely scrapped due to budget cuts as it was budgeted around $75 million and said that the characters were far too niche to be worthwhile the investment. No one knows ya, so get out of here. And lastly, Batgirl, who was done dirty, my friend. So the Batgirl movie was said to have been 70% done with its post-production and one of the first HBO exclusive releases, but then it was shelved. Deemed never to see the light of day, used as a tax write-off instead. This was to feature Leslie Grace as Barbara Gordon, featuring an outfit similar to the New 52 comics. With a triumphant return to the movies, Brendan Frazier, folks, was supposed to be playing Firefly. Even with a lot of positives being said about the film, Warner Brothers scrapped it because it didn't fit with the company's strategic approach to maximize secure financial return. Translation meaning it sucked, or it wasn't going to make any money, or it sucked and wasn't going to make any money. Either way, DC may have some bad press here or there, but they are working on a whole bevy of new, exciting, interesting, and weird projects. I'd love to hear what projects you are most looking forward to, and will we ever see the Batgirl movie that is just sitting on a shelf collecting dust right now? And I'll let you know, we are currently running a competition giving away three copies of Top Gun Maverick on the 15th of November, and all you have to do to get a chance of winning this is like this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below on what DC project you are most excited for. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of last month's are on screen right now. So if that is you, message us on Twitter at heavy spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out some of our other cool videos, whether it be our Black Adam ending explained or our House of Dragon finale breakdown. With that out of the way, thanks for your constant support. I've been Jared and don't worry, we will get a weasel movie one day. Just you wait. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.